name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord, our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and their life, they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Bài chích thư Bài chích thư thứ nhất của Thánh phê Tông Đồ Cùng các bậc kỳ mục trong anh em Tôi xin có mấy lời khuyên nhủ Vì tôi cũng thuộc hàng kỳ mục Lại là chứng nhân những đau khổ của Đức Kitô Và được dự phần vinh quang sắp tỏ hiện trong tương lai Anh em hãy chăn dắt đoàn chiên mà Thiên Chúa đã giao phó cho anh em Lo lắng cho họ không phải vì miễn cưỡng, nhưng hoàn toàn tự nguyện như Thiên Chúa muốn. Không phải vì ham hố lời lọc thấp hèn, nhưng vì lòng nhiệt thành tận tụy. Đừng lấy quyền mà thống trị những người Thiên Chúa đã giao phó cho anh em, nhưng hãy nêu gương sáng cho đoàn chiên. Như thế, khi vị mục tử tối cao xuất hiện, anh em sẽ được lãnh triều thiên vinh hiển không bao giờ hư nát. Đó là lời chưa.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock in your midst, overseeing it not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit either. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything that I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Daniel Martin Mahoney. Paul Duan Van Nguyen. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying then on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, along with Bishop Evans, I want to welcome you to our beautiful cathedral on this beautiful and blessed day that the Lord has given us. Special word of welcome to the priests who are with us today in very good number, to our deacons as well, to the consecrated women and men who are here, and to our seminarians who are with us as well. And a very special welcome to the family and friends of Dan and Juan who are with us today, and especially to the visitors who have come with us from all over our country to be with us for the ordination ceremony this morning. And on behalf of all those who are present in our cathedral, 
this morning. We want to extend our greetings to the family and friends of Duan who are watching our ceremony today in Vietnam. Although, dear friends, we are separated by many miles, today, indeed, we feel very, very close to you. We are united in faith, and as disciples of Jesus Christ, as members of the same Holy Church. So today, dear friends, in Vietnam, we send to you our affection, our prayers, and our blessings. And Dan and Duan, we extend to you today our very joyful congratulations. We know this is a defining moment in your life. God has created you for this moment, and this marks a new beginning for you. We recognize that as you are ordained priest today and look into the future, you are setting sail into uncharted and turbulent seas for our world and our church. Uncharted and turbulent seas in our church and our world, but that's okay because here in the ocean state, we know how to handle such things. <laughs> so, Duan and Dan, as you begin today, I urge you to have faith and trust and confidence. God has led you here, and he will certainly not abandon you now or in the future. And that's the beautiful promise of the Holy Spirit that you receive here this day. This is the year of St. Joseph that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has asked us to observe in the universal church. And in a particular way, the Pope has encouraged seminarians and priests to find in St. Joseph a role model for fatherhood. This is a very timely reminder for you, Dan and Duan, for beginning today, people will routinely call you father. But what does it mean to be a spiritual father? Well, Pope Francis explains it this way in speaking to priests. He says, it will do you good to place yourselves in your vocation under St. Joseph's mantle and to learn from him the art of fatherhood. As a father, a parish priest must first love the family, the community to which he is sent. By loving his family, his parish, he will come to know them deeply and be able to set them along new paths. Our Holy Father continues, it is the attitude of the shepherd who never abandons his flock, but places himself in different places based on the concrete needs of the moment, sometimes in front of the sheep to open up the way sometimes in the middle of the sheep to encourage them, and sometimes in the back to gather those that are lost. Two very beautiful images of the role of the priest in the church today, a father with his family, a shepherd with his sheep. And the rite of ordination further explains what the ministry of the priest entails. The instruction that the church gives us today says this, says, our brothers are now to be ordained to the priesthood in the order of the presbyterate to serve Christ, the teacher, priest, and shepherd. They are to be configured to Christ, the eternal high priest. They are to preach the gospel, shepherd God's people, and to celebrate the sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. Then, and one, you are now to be raised to the order of the priesthood. You will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ the teacher. Likewise, you will exercise the office of sanctifying. Understand then what you do and imitate what you celebrate. And the instruction continues, and united with the bishop and subject to him, Strive to bring the faithful together into one family so that you will lead them to God the Father through Christ and in the Holy Spirit. Keep before you always the example of the good shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve and to seek out 
and save what was lost. The words of the instruction, these words are beautiful and lofty words to be sure. But if only we could always live up to these ideals, those who are being ordained today and the rest of us priests who were ordained perhaps a few years ago or many years ago, if only we could live up and keep these ideals, what good and holy priest we would be. But we know that it's difficult. We realize day after day that we are but fragile, imperfect earthen vessels who contain the glory of God. But nonetheless, as the Gospel of St. John reminded us today, we believe that God has chosen us for this ministry. We did not choose this ministry. God has chosen us for this ministry. And we are very confident that if we always strive to do our best, God will do great and wonderful and holy things through us. There's another context for your ordination and First Mass tomorrow, Dan and Duan. For tomorrow is the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the great solemnity of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This liturgical context highlights the special bond between the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Priesthood. Our Holy Father, Pope Emeritus Benedict, spoke clearly of this spiritual bond of the two. In a homily to priest, Pope Benedict said, the ministerial priesthood entails a profound relationship with Christ who is given to us in the Eucharist. Let the celebration of the Eucharist be the center of your priestly lives. In this way, it will also be the center of your ecclesial mission. Let the celebration of the Eucharist be the center of your priestly lives. In other words, my dear brothers, in the Eucharist, you will find the font of personal spiritual growth and holiness, which is, after all, your most important task. In the Eucharist, you will find the strength to sacrifice yourself each day for your people in good times and in bad. In the Eucharist, you will be motivated to preach the gospel of Jesus in its fullness and its richness. In the Eucharist, you will experience the love of God and be moved then to share that love with others, especially those who are poor and in need. And in the Eucharist, you will find a faithful friend in Jesus who will be with you in good times and in bad, in moments of joy and sorrow, success and failure, and in life and death as you traverse those stormly, stormy seas that await you. Dear brothers, we've listened to the formal instruction that the church gives us on this occasion. When I was ordained a priest almost 48 years ago, I received another instruction, and this one from my mom, who said to me very clearly and very directly, if you're going to be a priest, be a good one. I don't know that I've completely lived up to my mom's instructions, but I've done my best. And Dan and Duan, even though the circumstances of the day are very different, the instruction and challenge of my mom remains the same. If you're going to be a priest, be a good one. That's our hope and our prayer for you today. May our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Providence, be with you every step of the way. Amen. And now, my dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit 
to discharge without fail the office of priesthood and the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock. Your resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? And do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants whom he has chosen for the office of priest.
Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank in dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men. And with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, almighty Father, to these your servants, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up, May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your people the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word, and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love and so with all the angels and saints we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim <coughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Father Dwan and Father Mahoney. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this <laughs> sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you the eternal god living and true in communion with those who memory we venerate especially the glorious ever virgin mary mother of our god and lord jesus christ and blesses joseph her spouse your blessed apostles and mothers, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Ninus, Cletus, Clement, Sictus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Norton, Christian August, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting power. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O Lord God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne to, by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy <laughs> apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, 
Felicity Perpetua Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all of your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, as we conclude now, permit me to take this final moment to say a word of thanks, first of all, to all of you, each and every one of you for being present today, and a very special word of thanks to everyone who planned our ceremony and participated in any special way. What a beautiful and solemn and prayerful and joyful occasion it has been as we've given thanks and praise to God for our new priest. As we go forward, I just want to encourage you to keep working and praying for more vocations for the priesthood for our diocese. It's our great spiritual and pastoral need that we'll always have good shepherds and spiritual fathers to take care of God's people. Pray for vocations and please pray for all of the priests who are here today and all of the priests of our diocese that as we celebrate the ordination of new priests, it will be an occasion for all of us to renew the gift and the grace of our priestly vocation as well. And finally, please join me again in extending our prayers and our gratitude and our congratulations to our new priest who are ordained here this day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.